Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Dark Souls Remastered. There's been new information that's come out. This actually came out a while ago, but I am now making the video just because I wasn't actually aware of this. Now, there was a couple things I heard about, and I was a little bit worried because, if you remember, I did make an initial video talking about Dark Souls Remastered and what I thought about it. And a lot of the things I talked about in that video has now come true, unfortunately. And those are the things that were frightening me about Dark Souls Remastered. So I'm going to break all that down and talk about it. There's one crucial thing that is yet to be seen. They haven't talked about it. If they change that particular thing, when it comes to the player versus player, I think that it's going to be not so great. So we'll see how it goes. They haven't talked about it yet. So hopefully the major thing, they will not change. But everything else, unfortunately, they have actually incorporated what I feared they would. So I'm going to try to break all that down and just tell you what's going on. If you haven't actually been following the news with this game, I can kind of just tell you what's up and why I'm a little bit worried about it. I am definitely somewhat worried about Dark Souls Remastered just because of these things. Now before I actually get into any of the negative stuff that I'm not looking forward to, I can really just talk about what I think is really good about Dark Souls Remastered. The first thing is, it's coming to PS4 and Xbox One and of course Nintendo Switch. So that is fantastic. Nintendo fans can now play Dark Souls. I don't think they've ever got the chance to do that, so that's really great for them. If you have played Dark Souls and you're a veteran of the series, then you can now play it on your current generation of consoles. That's great because the last thing I ever want to do is hook up my Xbox 360 or the PS3 to play Dark Souls. I definitely would rather play it on the PS4. I don't own an Xbox One, but if I did, that would also be great, of course. Now, I did not include PC in that because, well, PC, it's PC, so it's coming there too, but you could play Dark Souls anytime you want on PC. If you're a PC gamer, that's really not a problem. Where for the console gamers, it kind of is. If you don't want to hook up your old generation of consoles, then you're not going to probably play Dark Souls just because it's only available on the old generation. Where with Dark Souls 2, you can always just go ahead and play Scholar. Even if you don't really like Scholar that much, you can still go and play it if you just want to play Dark Souls 2. And you have Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne on the PS4. Now when it comes to Demon Souls, I don't think they'll ever do a remaster for that game. I hope they do, but I don't think they will just because it is a Sony exclusive. Pretty much meaning that if it did come out, it can only come out on PS4 and that's it. It can't come out on Nintendo, it can't come out on Xbox or PC or nothing. It's pretty much just like Bloodborne. And that is a bummer, of course. But that is why they made Dark Souls, if you didn't know that. The reason they made Dark Souls, although it is pretty much Demon Souls 2, they made it so that it could pretty much be on everything and that it wouldn't be a Sony exclusive. I don't know, they did repeat this with Bloodborne and that was kind of a bummer. Unfortunately, we'll probably not see a Demon Souls remastered. Now, of course, the other great thing about Dark Souls Remastered is that they are updating the graphics. That is fantastic because we are going to get 60 frames per second. I think that is the most important thing out of everything. I know a lot of people have been kind of pointing out that they don't really think that Dark Souls Remastered looks that much better. And I tend to agree with that. I don't think it looks like amazing or anything like that. It definitely, to me, looks better, but it's not like anything that is mind-blowing. And that is kind of a shame, but to me, the most important thing is the 60 frames per second. I would love to play Dark Souls in 60 frames per second. That will be awesome. Never got to experience that. I didn't own the PC version, so that is really cool. Now that I got that out the way, we can pretty much just start talking about all the changes. As I go down the list of all the changes, I'm going to talk about what I personally think is a negative and things I don't like that they're changing. But for the most part, I'm just going to try to just tell you what's up and... I'll just give my opinion on pretty much everything I read here. Now, here's the deal. The first and most important thing to me that I'm really disappointed in is that they are not going to do anything when it comes to the single player slash co-op campaign of the game. There is nothing changing for that, and that is definitely a big bummer. The game is $40, which is the same price as Scholar of the First Sin when that first came out. Now, the selling point to Scholar was a couple things. They were updating the graphics, giving you 60 frames per second, all that type of good stuff. But they were also going to rearrange the enemies, change some lighting, do a couple different things, and make the game just better. And I think they also added in the six-player multiplayer. There was a lot of great things in that that kind of appealed to people, saying, oh, wow, I can play Dark Souls 2 on my PS4 or Xbox One. The game's going to be different. 
I'm definitely willing to pay $40 to experience this. And it was good for what it was. I definitely enjoyed it. Although I think that the biggest downside to Scholar was they did not give you the option to change it back to be the original Dark Souls 2 layout for the enemies. Or you can do this updated Scholar the First Sin layout. I wish they would have gave us that option. They didn't. And that was a big bummer with that game. But overall, I thought it was worth it. Now, for this, they're not doing anything like that. They're not going to rearrange the enemies or really change anything. And that kind of is a little disappointing just because if you are a veteran and you play Dark Souls a lot, you're not going to get anything out of the campaign that you haven't already experienced. And that is not good, in my opinion. I wish they would have done something or maybe gave us a new mode. I was thinking, you know, it would be cool if they gave us like a black mode or something like that. A really, really amped up hard difficulty mode that you could try and you're going to just get your butt kicked. I wish they would have gave us something like that. They're not doing that. At least they're not announcing that they're doing anything like that. So we'll have to see how it goes. But for now, nothing's changing in that department. And that, to me, is the biggest downside to the whole deal because it's $40. And that's kind of a lot. If it was $20, I would forgive it. I would say, oh, that's fine. It's $20. Who cares? But it's 40 bucks, so I don't know. A little leery just on that alone. Now, when it comes to the rest of the changes, a lot of this stuff is great, but some of this stuff has me very leery. Now, I don't want to say that they are bad changes because for all I know, it could all work out and can be great. So I don't want to say it's bad, but I will say that it makes me fearful because my biggest thing that I talked about in my original video that I'm really worried about might be coming because this kind of stuff tells me that it definitely is designed for that system and that is not good it is not good at all and to me that will ruin the pvp and will make me not want to play the pvp which i'm really looking forward to to me dark souls has the best pvp i definitely had the most fun with that i did enjoy the pvp in dark souls 2 but i absolutely hated the pvp in bloodborne and in dark souls 3 I definitely liked the PvP a lot more in Bloodborne than I did in Dark Souls 3, but as the franchises went on and as FromSoft continued to develop these games, I thought the PvP got worse and worse and worse. And I'm hoping that they are not going to change Dark Souls Remastered into Bloodborne slash Dark Souls 3 PvP. That's what I'm really, really leery about. And a lot of these changes are telling me that that's where they're going. And a lot of these things I talked about in that original video that I did not want them to do, and they have done these things already. So we'll have to see how it goes. But the one thing I did forget to mention, another great positive when it comes to this, is that a lot of people who never got to play Dark Souls will now get to play it. And the population of Dark Souls will be fairly large because there was a lot of people who played Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3, and they never played Dark Souls. And I am really happy about that because that is fantastic for those people who get to enjoy it. And it's good for me because it's going to give me a large population of people to play with doing co-op. Or I can go and pwn them as an invader because I am an invader. I always like evading people. Sometimes I'm nice. Sometimes I'm mean. Sometimes it just is all random. That's what I like. Random evasions. And that is what I enjoy to do when it comes to PvP. I occasionally will like to duel every once in a while. I occasionally like to go and try to gank spank or get my butt whooped by gankers. I don't care. Like, I'm down to do everything. And Dark Souls, in my opinion, had the best PvP for that. And we'll have to see how this goes. But overall, I do like the fact that a lot of people are going to be able to play this who never got the chance. And they can experience it. I am just a little bit leery that their experience might be just completely different than my original experience, especially when it comes to the online multiplayer stuff. So now let me go ahead and start breaking this down and I can tell you all the changes and I'll just pretty much say what I think of everything. The first big change, of course, is that the maximum number of players has been increased from four to six. Now, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I definitely think that that is perfectly okay. And that is probably a good change. Now that is what I said initially because that's what we were told. That the multiplayer will be increased to six players. And here's where things start to get a little bit leery. The dry finger will be needed to play with six players. So I'm assuming that the maximum number of players will be four. Okay. And if you use the dry finger you can now play with six. Now that is not really different from the other Dark Souls games. At least, I'm trying to remember this, but I'm pretty sure 
it was the same system in Dark Souls 3. But I had a lot of problems with Dark Souls 3 system, so that makes me a little bit leery. Okay, so let's continue with this. So the Dry Finger has been moved to the Undead Burg, or at least to the Merchant at the Undead Burg. That way you can attain it really early in the game. Okay, that's fine. If the Dry Finger is a crucial part of the multiplayer, I guess it's okay to move it. Now there's no problem with that. Now this is a great change. This is a fantastic change, obviously. Password matchmaking is now available. That's good, okay? I love password matchmaking. It's a great thing if you want to play with your friends. And also, it's going to allow you to play with people who might be higher level than you. If you have some friends who are like maximum level, they've been playing a lot, and they're really high level, you can all play together even if you're a low level, and it's just going to pretty much rescale it and adjust it so that it's actually fair. And I like that. That's also very good. Now here we go again. Now this is this is not good. This is something that makes me very, very fearful. Healing items will not be available during PvP, with the exemption of the SS Flash. To prevent long and drawn out battles, the number of SS Flash is half for phantoms. Now, what that means is that the invader and the people that are summoned, if they're red phantoms or whatever, and also the white summons are going to have their SS Flash half. Now here's the big question. How are the phantoms going to heal? Are they going to heal themselves with their own SS Flash? Or are they going to be healed by the host? Because in Dark Souls, and this is what I'm talking about, this is what makes me leery, is because they're kind of changing a crucial element of Dark Souls, something that I thought worked really well. And it could potentially be really awesome for this new six-player multiplayer, especially in gank situations, which there's going to be a lot of them, especially in the forest and places like that. In Dark Souls, the way that the phantoms were healed, the host's phantoms, was that the host had to chug. He had to chug away and he could heal the phantoms. The invaders could only heal with spells and humanities and, of course, divine blessings, which that's a bunch of cheese. So, in a way, this is a good change, at least to prevent divine blessings from being used because even though there's no save editor to go and get a bunch of divine blessings, you could still dupe them. So... Yeah, people, if they know about duping, it's really easy to do on the PS4 as well. If you know about that from the other Dark Souls games, and trust me, FromSoft, they're not thinking about this, so... I don't know, unless they change the system even more, where you can't drop items and people can't pick them up. That's the only way they can fix duping, okay? But in Dark Souls 3, you could dupe away all you want. In Dark Souls 2, you could dupe away all you want. So there was a lot of duping that you could do if people knew how to do it. And in this, you could dupe items. That is a thing that I think will be there. And Divine Blessings, of course, can be cancer. Okay, they can be very, very bad for multiplayer because a lot of people in Dark Souls used save editors and they would have 99 of them and they would just constantly use them. They're very quick. You can just heal instantly, full health. It was cheese. So that is a good change to prevent that. But the humanities, that is potentially bad. Because, once again, if the phantoms will heal themselves with their own S's, and then the invaders will have to heal themselves with their own S's, that's Dark Souls 3, okay? And that's potentially not good. My biggest issue is that if the invader cannot heal with humanities, and the only way they can heal is the one way, it's just so messed up because the problem is ganking. And that's something FromSoft has done, and I just don't get it. I don't understand, because the system in Dark Souls, the original, Dark Souls 1, was kind of perfect in a way, because you had the ganking. That was a part of the game. And I'm not going to sit here and try to complain about ganking. I don't mind it. But if you are an invader, and you're under the invader mindset, I don't understand this, guys. Here's the deal. If you make the invaders not have fun, and you make the invaders hate the game... You are going to kill the game, because if there's no invaders, well, then the game kind of suffers from that, obviously. If nobody wants to invade, you're going to kill your multiplayer, because that's a crucial aspect of it, and all you're going to have is duels and stuff like that, and it's just so boring. I like random invasions. I like random stuff. So if it's random, I'm cool with that. If I get ganked, you know, I don't know, one out every three times, whatever, fine, I don't care. But if I'm getting ganked non-stop, and obviously in Dark Souls, if I go to the forest, 
I'm under the mindset that I'm going to be ganked, and I'm going there to try to gank spank. I'm going there to be ganked. I'm not going there to try to duel somebody. No. But as a random invader, it's fun when it's random. It's really fun when it's random. And if people are doing co-op, that's different from ganking. And to me, I mean, I think that this whole healing change thing, I can understand a divine blessing. Get that out of there. Just make it so you can't use that. But not being able to use humanities, that's going to be a big bummer. And humanities, you didn't need to dupe humanities. You could farm from them. You could go and work for your humanities. And then you could use them for when you're doing random invasions. So, I don't know. I'm not really too happy about that because I can see that being abused, obviously. Now, again, if the host has to heal his phantoms with his own potions, that can be cool. Because the way it's going to work is that... People are going to be able to use the dry finger, okay? I didn't really talk about this because this list didn't really describe it the way I wanted it to. But people are going to use the dry finger. And when they use it, they're going to be able to summon one extra phantom, which is just so stupid. I don't get that. I mean, I just don't understand why that has to be a part of the game. I don't see how in the world could someone need three white phantoms to help them defeat any boss in the game. Two white phantoms make the game extremely easy. And all the people who complain about Dark Souls being too hard, I mean, there's plenty of examples of people just summoning one phantom or two phantoms and then sitting back and not doing anything and just letting the phantoms kill the boss. So, no, the game is not hard. There's things you can do to make the game easier, like doing co-op. That is an option for people. But there is just no reason why you need three white phantoms. Okay, because a lot of people, what they will do, and they did this in Dark Souls 3, is they will summon three white phantom buddies, and then, maybe with the password system, they'll summon a red phantom that is also their friend. And they're all in party chat, they're all having a good time, and then that one guy is coming in there, and he just keeps getting murdered by five people. That drives invaders crazy when that kind of stuff happens. That is a level of cheap that is unreal. And that really bums invaders out. They don't want to deal with that nonstop. And you will see that. That will happen. But a lot of times it might just be one guy and then three white phantoms. Which that is the whole purpose of it. Is that you're giving the host all of the advantage. Okay. You're taking any type of advantage away from the invader. And that's something that happened in Dark Souls 3. There's a lot of examples of this. Why can't it just be 3v3? Why can't it just be six players without the dry finger? Just don't even have it in the game. Take it out of the game, okay? Screw the dry finger. If you are playing, you are constantly at the risk of being invaded. Because in Dark Souls 1, you have the option to never be invaded. You have that already. Just don't become human, okay? If you don't want to be invaded, don't become human. If you want to play co-op, well, there you go. Now you might be invaded. It is a thing that can happen. But you don't have to be invaded ever, okay? If you have the balls to go through the game without needing to summon people. If you're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to beat it by myself. That's what I did. I didn't want to be invaded my first playthrough. But I didn't really want help either. I wanted to do it on my own. This is a game that's supposed to be really hard. And people always talk about it. I want to beat it. And I don't want help. And I don't want to have people coming in my world kicking my butt because I don't know how to do PvP. So I went through my first playthrough hollow. I never became human because I knew once I become human, I might be invaded. Now, realistically, a lot of people might want to be human so that they can go ahead and summon people. That's fine. But that's when you open yourself up to be invaded. And I just don't understand why it can't just be 3v3. Why you need to use the dry finger to change it. And here's the big problem. Now I'm going to break it down why this really makes me nervous about Dark Souls Remastered PvP. My biggest concern is the matchmaking system. And all this talk about the dry finger being a crucial element of the multiplayer, that pretty much tells me that this game is going to be just like Dark Souls 3. You're going to have priority to always go after the people with the dry finger. That is the purpose of the dry finger when you use it you are telling the world or telling the server let's just be realistic i want to be invaded i want people to come in here and invade me i'm going to give myself an extra advantage i'm going to summon now three phantoms and i want to be invaded 
and I'm going to be nonstop invaded because guess what? Everyone is going to constantly be invading me and you're not going to have random invasions anymore. They're no longer random. You know what you're getting into. Now, maybe there's some areas in the game where this won't be a problem and you can go and invade those areas. But for the most part, every area might become this where it's like, I'm going to constantly invade people that are ganking. Some people might be doing co-op, but a lot of them are ganking. That's what they're doing. And no matter where I go, I cannot just invade one guy or maybe even two guys. I can't do it because everywhere I go, I keep getting sucked in to people using the drive finger and I'm just literally being ganked nonstop. That makes me not want to invade because I don't mind being ganked every once in a while. Even if it's like one out every three times, that's fine. But I don't want to be ganked nonstop. It's going to make me not want to invade people. So now... Either A, I'll become the ganker, or B, I'll go and duel people. And that's all I'm going to do. And I lose my fun of my random evasions. Oh, God. So hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully the matchmaking system is not going to become that. But all this talk about this dry finger, man, it's really telling me that's what we're getting. All these changes to the healing. Oh, my God. I mean, I can already imagine this. One of the biggest problems with Dark Souls 3, on top of everything else, because that's what Dark Souls 3 was when that game came out. You were going to get ganked. If you were trying to randomly invade people, you were going to get ganked every freaking time. And it was so annoying. And every once in a while, you would win gank spank. But it's like, okay, you know, I got this little hollow victory for a moment. In five minutes, I'm going to go again, and I'm going to get ganked again. And I'm going to just keep getting ganked. Oh, my God. Like, it was just so frustrating trying to do random evasions in Dark Souls 3. And there were things that you could do because the invader is generally better than the gankers. I mean, that's just the way it is. Obviously, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, the gankers don't stand a chance. And a lot of those people, they're going to get whooped because the invader has experience with the PvP. They know what they're doing. And either they're really good at the game and are they're really knowledgeable about the game and they're going to use things to their advantage to try to even the odds. And what did FromSoft do? They nerfed everything that gave the invader a potential advantage. If there was like a build, oh, I'm going to use this build, I'm going to spin to win, and it's going to kill all of the phantoms instantly once they try to swarm me, they took that away. They're like, oh, we got to nerf that. That's too powerful. We're taking away too many of the host's advantages. We have to nerf all this OP stuff because obviously the invaders are getting one up on these gankers it was just ridiculous and i can see that happening because see a lot of people if they didn't play dark souls one they don't know about the one big thing right and that is the punishment the punishment for the cheap people now there's a lot of people who are cheap in one-on-ones are with the ganking they can be cheap but there was always one thing that the invader could resort to and that was the infinite roll bs's you could constantly just roll bs and i know a lot of people are already complaining about this saying hey guys wait a minute don't forget about roll bs don't forget about the backstab in dark souls one because it was ridiculous and it is it is ridiculous but i can see it right now that game comes out and they might not change that whole mechanic where they're going to have that roll bs in there where it's going to be ridiculous and then once the invaders start to get ganked nonstop, where it's just like i cannot randomly invade anybody I'm literally just getting into gank lobbies or co-op lobbies, which, you know, become gank lobbies. Although that is not their intention is to gank. I'm still getting ganked, basically. I'm just going to roll BS everybody, okay? I'm going to resort to that. Okay, there's three of you or four of you. I'm just going to start roll BSing the host nonstop. And hopefully the rest of the phantoms won't be able to heal. As long as I can keep that host locked up, maybe if I have one other ally there who might be a red invader, which, of course... Is so cheap because the phantoms they can't hit each other but the red invaders well they can hit each other so we're constantly hitting each other we can't kill the host and he has all the advantages and it's just so frustrating i'm gonna keep roll bsing him he's not able to heal those phantoms so kill those phantoms and we can get this guy hopefully that's the case but guess what people are gonna be like that's not fair oh my god the butt face is coming back out he's gonna complain Oh my god, what is happening? This Robius is so bullshit. What the fuck? And they're going to nerf it. They're going to change it. Okay, we got to do something about that. Oh, we forgot about the Robius. We need to change the backstab mechanic now because 
obviously that's giving the invaders too much of an advantage see this is the type of stuff that makes me worried because i love the pvp in dark souls but if they do that where the matchmaking system is just every time i try to invade i'm always just getting into lobbies of people using the dry finger that's all i get if that's the case i don't know i'm not gonna want to do it i'm just gonna go put down my red sign at the undead burg if i want to do pvp that's all i'm gonna do but unfortunately, I'm going to constantly get summoned by people who are also ganking there. Oh my god. Let me continue with this. There's one last thing that's on this list I just wanted to mention. And this is also kind of a good thing, but I don't know. It's kind of a bad thing too, in my opinion. And that is players outside of the host's parameter range will not be matched with each other. Now what that really means to me, because that's not really breaking it down the way that they should have broke it down... Basically, in Dark Souls 1, one of the biggest complaints with that game, and this is why we got Soul Memory, by the way, in Dark Souls 2, is that a lot of players would go and make like a level 1 or 10 build and go and beat the game. If you could beat the game at a Soul Level 1, you could beat the game at Soul Level 10. And then you would go and get some like OP stuff, like Great Combustion with a fully maxed out Pyromancer glove, and then you could just go and invade really low level people and one shot them with Great Combustion or whatever you had. Like you could just go and murder everybody with maxed out gear, and they had nothing because they just started. And there were a lot of people who did that. Now I did that too. I'll admit it. I had a lot of fun doing that because once again, I love me some random invasions. But I was never mean about it. I wasn't just going to run up to the guy and one-shot him. I was going to mess with him. Because a lot of those people, when they first start the game, I'm probably their first invader they're going to see. And when they see me, they're like, oh man, what is this? And they don't know what to do. But I wouldn't attack them. I would actually be nice. I would even give them items. Give them weapons and stuff. Like, I would just help them out a lot of times. And if they were mean to me and trying to kill me nonstop, and I'm trying to like you know wave to them and be nice to them, yeah, I would kill them. But I had fun with it. But it is a problem because people, for whatever reason, would just go and murder people. Like that's all they wanted to do is go and one shot everybody. So they're fixing that basically. They're gonna make it so like if you have a plus ten weapon, you're not gonna be able to invade someone who has a weapon that's like not plus ten stuff like that. So that's pretty much a good change i guess although i don't like it just because i like to do that also we have the arena stuff 3v3 and six player deathmatch has been added all that type of stuff is fine i guess and then there's other things like uh, dedicated servers i forgot to mention that that's a big part about it or at least peer-to-peer -peer dedicated servers which i don't know if they announced that initially when they announced dark souls remastered but I'm sorry, guys, for my little rant there, but that's how I feel, man. I really feel like this might be a disaster. They might turn Dark Souls into Dark Souls 3 multiplayer, and I just don't want that to happen. Because if I go to the forest, I know everything I just talked about is going to happen. I know that. But if I'm somewhere else, I don't want that to be my only evasion. I want to have some random evasions with random stuff happening. I shouldn't have to deal with the same thing nonstop. And that's what kills the randomness of the invasion. And that is what kills the multiplayer to an invader. And when you lose your invaders, you lose the multiplayer. And that's pretty much what happened with Dark Souls 3. That game's PvP died off so fast, man. It was ridiculous. And all you ever seen was like the same people and they were all doing at one point. Because nobody was trying to be an invader anymore. They were sick of it. And that's what might happen. Like, that's exactly what might happen at this point. With this, if they go down that road. So I'm really hoping that they don't. Everything I'm reading here about this dry finger crap. It's telling me that's what they're doing. And the healing stuff. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you telling me that if I'm at a total disadvantage, 5v1... I have to just use my potions and that's it? I'm going to run out of my potions. I'm not going to run out of 99 humanities. Oh, man. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about this stuff and tell you how I'm feeling about it. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's been a fun little rant. I'm not trying to hate on the game. I'm not trying to tell you not to get it because I already said that I'm getting it regardless just because it's on PS4. 
But if these problems do exist in the game, and my prediction is right, then I'm probably not going to be into the multiplayer that much. I'll do the duels, but the random evasions, I'm not trying to get ganked nonstop. I'm okay with going to the forest to get ganked. But when I'm in the mood for that, and if I get ganked one out of every two times, I'll be happy. But I don't want to be ganked every single time. Because that's just not fun. That's not fun to me. Anyway, I'm going to end the video here. Please like the video for me. Subscribe for future Dark Souls content. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and peace out.